All right, there's more of the smearing and slander and besmirching. Uh, how is it Billy Bush is losing his job? Joy Behar keeps hers. Um, one of the most underreported stories. I mean, you see the media hysteric. Oh, my God, Donald Trump on an airplane, you know, w- assaulted me. All five women come out in one day. Seems a little bit suspicious. In the very same time, the WikiLeaks dump is going on, and nobody in the media is paying a lot of attention to it. There is a whole generation out there that has not heard the story of Juanita Broderick, Paula Jones, Kathleen Willey, and we put them on TV last night, and the response was unbelievable. And I thought, while they're in New York, I wanted to invite them down to my radio studio. Uh, I feel like I know all of you now very, very well. And, you know, one of the things, when I first interviewed you in particular, Juanita, because I did the second interview you did lisa myers first you know people would ask me all the time do you believe her and i'd say oh i believe her yeah i do and the the thing that came back last night to me the most is how believable all three of you are in terms of telling this story and i'm sure this isn't easy for you to come out again and to talk about something that's so horrible in your life oh that's right sean it is difficult but it's necessary we have a lot of voters out there that have no idea what happened to us. They have no idea. The media keeps spinning it as infidelities, like Kathleen so eloquently stated. And it's not. We're talking about crimes that Bill Clinton committed against us And in your ago. case, a rape. He raped you. Yes. And you tell the whole story and all its brutality, because it's a, this is a violent act yes, against it, you. Yes, it was. And, and I had a lady that came in and found me in that condition. She was one of my employees and one, my director of nursing. And she's corroborated your story as well as four other people. You told them at the time. Exactly. And he was the attorney general of Arkansas, so you didn't, you felt oh, you had no the, shot. Yeah, who, who would I tell? Yeah. He was the, the lead lawyer. He was the guy you tell. Yeah. 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 Uh, and Paula, you know, I, I noticed they, because we went a little longer than we should have, so I, we had to edit down our interview last night a little bit. And I noticed one of the things that made your story so truthful, and you got an $850,000 settlement, although I, I don't think you got a lot of that money, if any, right? You no, had lawyers. Very little. I got like 151000 Right. I just split it with all the attorneys, and then I had to pay taxes on that. So, yeah, so that you got, was very little. So that and, means you got ten thousand dollars out right. of the deal. The way and it the really wasn't about the money. No, everybody I know. said I was a gold digger and I was, you know, they said yeah. all kind of things. It was all about the money. It was nothing about the money. It wasn't about an apology that I couldn't get from him. And it was also, you know, think of the things that all of the Clinton surrogates said about you at the time. James Carville comes to mind the most. You drag a dollar through a trailer park. Exactly. I never lived in a trailer park in my life. Well, the idea was to minute to diminish you. Exactly. Slander you. Mm-hmm. But the part of your story that basically proved your case is that, and I'm not going to try and get too graphic here, is that there you saw his private parts because there was something distinguishing about it. Right, exactly. And, it was Yeah, and I knew that because I haven't seen a whole bunch of that in my lifetime, and I knew that something looked very awkward, right. you know. Compared to what I've seen, and, and very he, little. And what we now have bo- come to believe or identified as Peroni's disease. That's exactly what uh, some experts had said. Yes. Right, which mm-hmm. is that apparently it's not, it's... It's, it's bent. Thank you. Uh, it's thank bent, you. Thank bent, you to for, the, thank bent to the left. Oh, nonetheless. To the left. Yeah. To the left. Been to the it left. was. Oh, it was. <laughs> but I mean, and h- how you would you... notice that? <laughs> how would you possibly know that if, if you, you didn't, didn't see, see it? it? Exactly. Or I'm just making it up. Yeah. Really? Yeah. No, you, no. No. So that wouldn't have uh, that wouldn't have worked out. Mm-mm. And it was also interesting because a lot of you saw what had happened to Jennifer Flowers. And remember, when the Star Report came out, Clinton had finally owned up to having an affair with Jennifer Flowers. And Hillary and Bill had gone on 60 Minutes. Remember no, back? Yeah. And they all all denied it and he fight but he said one time one time Mm -hmm. okay so i'm not sure i believe that and kathleen your story is is horrendous too i mean and by the way i'm not diminishing paula he tried to grab you but i got out of there you got out of there yes i'm I'm thankful for that what kind of man takes his pants off in front of a A stranger sexual predator a predator absolutely that is so bizarre a stranger didn't ever never seen me before never met me before until that day you know i i cannot understand that mentality i can't either i just can it, it is so bizarre i told the story the other day and the media tried to pick up on this i said when i was young 
and I'd, I'd ask a girl if I could kiss her goodnight or whatever, and she said, no, I, I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry. I, you know, you know, the idea that they could be this sick and twisted is mm-hmm. goes such against the my grain. I just, I don't understand it. And in your case, Kathleen, you're in the Oval Office. He's groping, grabbing, touching, fondling, kissing, and you don't, how do you get out of there? You're in the Oval Office. Who do you call? Who do you call? Do you scream? Do you do you holler? Do you slap him? Do you hit him? You know? Do you kick him? Do you knee him? I mean, what 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 do you do? And and the whole and my mind is racing, and I'm thinking to myself, you know, what what in the world is he doing? What is he doing? And and um, it, there was a knock on the door. We were in the in the back behind the, the Oval Office. As it turned out, it was the little private study where he used to meet Monica, and that's where he said that we needed more privacy, which I thought was kind. At the time, I thought, well, what's more private than the Oval Office? But anyway, he said, but I didn't think anything of it. He was our friend. And anyway, um, um, his aide, Andrew Friendly, banged on the door to remind him that he had a meeting because they had fit me in. And um, and, and, I, and I thought to myself, Here, here's my moment. And it didn't distract him in the slightest, not in the slightest. And you know, he kept on. And then a few minutes later, Andrew knocked on the door again, and that, and that was when I got out of there. I just got out of there, and I and I ran as fast as I could to that door into the Oval Office, and I had to cross the cross the entire Oval Office to the other door. And I remember thinking to myself, with, we had all heard his reputation. I thought, who am I going to be looking at when I opened the door on the other side? And um. And there was Lloyd Benson, Leon Panetta, and I think Laura Tyson. And I was, you know, before I before I opened the door, I was trying to get my hair straight and my clothes straight, and, and you know, because I thought I, the first thing I thought was I don't I I don't want them thinking that about me. And uh, I I just ran past them as fast as I could. You know, uh, the thing that really stood out last night to me was I asked you in this election season because they're they're running with. In the middle of the WikiLeaks dump, five women in a day come out that, and by the way, none of their allegations are anything like yours. Let's put put that aside first. But the, the, the come out in a day, I would argue, to distract. We've also learned a lot from WikiLeaks, too. But what shocked me, and Juanita, I'll ask you this, is that the media never contacted any of you the mainstream media never contacted any of you during this entire election cycle. They've made now two runs at the New York Times against Donald Trump. Um, so what we've learned from WikiLeaks is the media is so biased and you're experiencing they never contacted you. No, I, I was contacted by the Washington Post. OK, but that's the only one. The only one. Yeah. ABC. No, no. Anybody here? Any this Washington Post. They came all the way to Arkansas, came up to my my house without. Well, give them cre- I'll give them credit. But we didn't talk to him. My husband said I don't blame you. told him, no, we're not talking. We're not talking. To I don't. But bl- and then you had. All right. So ABC, CBS, NBC. No, 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 no contact. Absolutely not. No, no request no. for an interview. No. And CNN and MSNBC. No. CNBC. No. no. They can't wait to get these others out about Donald Trump. Well, that's the thing. I mean, CNN totally. last night, I think, spent hours and hours, oh, you know, on this whole thing about Trump. What do you conclude when you put that together with WikiLeaks and all of these campaigns in the tank for Hillary, I mean... Trying to smother that out. They don't want that out there. They don't, they don't want to... No, win. they don't. They don't They don't want to hear from us, you know, and that's very evident. Well, they don't want the WikiLeaks stuff out there as well, so they're trying to, you know... Distract. The t- exactly, to- towards what they say these women have said about Donald Trump. Well, what difference... Okay, if, if, they're, if they believe their story, why do they not believe ours? You tell me, that is insane. That is so hypocritical. How can... And uh, did you hear what Obama... I mean, not Obama, but Michelle said? Yes. I mean... I heard She it was about... almost like in tears about these women that have no corroborating yeah. evidence. And, and we do, but we're, we're never talked about. She don't believe us. She right. don't want to mention us. How hypocritical is that and this is not just about bill all of you say hillary knew yes oh uh, yes definitely she had to have yes she's been married to him for how many years yes how did you not know your spouse and know what he's out there running around doing? Well, they were involved. She was up to her eyeballs in these bimbo eruptions, as yeah. they called them. And George Stephanopoulos, who said ABC, ironically, right? Right. She's, yeah. You know? And she personally threatened you. Oh, yes. Yeah. About three weeks after the um, 
the rape took place. Yeah. Uh, and I think I told you this last night that I did not go to the fundraiser. I went there very early to give them information that I had as a volunteer from the campaign. To, find, to finish your business with them. Yeah, and say, I'm through. My business mm-hmm. is taking too much of my time. And then when she comes up to me, she comes in. They come in much earlier than we expected. Yeah. And before I could get out the front door and comes over to me, which I've told you time and time again about, and was just so sweet and so nice and had this huge smile on her face and tells me, thank you for everything that you're doing for Bill's campaign. How do you think she knew about it? Do you ever think about that? I don't oh, know. yeah. My, my driver, the driver that drew, drove them from the airport, came over to me just before she did and said that the topic of the conversation all the way from the airport was about me. So why would it be about why would they be talking? Talking about me, mm-hmm. had he not discussed me with her, and he had to be scared I didn't to know death. her. I didn't know her from Adam. As a, as much of a sociopath and psychopath as he is, right? He, but John, the the big thing is after she said all her niceties is yeah. when she pulls me over to her, and her her smile goes into a frown. Her voice is very angry, and that's when I told you that she said. Do you understand everything you do? Kathleen, we only have about two minutes left. You told us a story last night, and it, I wasn't sure if you wanted it aired. Uh, I'll give you the time to tell that story, but uh, in your own words, because this impacted your life in a big way. It did, and it's uh, it's the only time that, that I've told this story. My children were threatened two days before my deposition in Paula Jones' case. And um, the person who threatened them, the stranger who confronted me, um, knew their names, knew their addresses, they lived out of town, and they basically said, you're just not getting the message, are you? And then, um, and I've, I've not told this story before, when I was 18 years old, I um, got in trouble with my high school boyfriend, and I got pregnant, and I went up away to a home for unwed mothers run by nuns. You know, abortion was not an option. You gave your child up for adoption. I gave my child up for adoption. By the I, way, what a loving act. I think that's a loving act. Well, it was a, it was the saddest day of my life. Back then, you couldn't even hold them. I was not even allowed to hold them. And, um, and I swore that day, that last day I saw him, that someday I would find him. And I did find him a, about 30 years later. Four months after I found him is when my name came out in the press. Two days before my deposition, this hired goon of Hillary's knew his name, knew his wife's name. And threatened him. Knew his, lo- knew his little girl's name and threatened their lives. And as a result, you don't see him anymore. I, I, I had to tell him. I, di- I didn't tell him until the morning of this, my 60 Minutes interview. I did not tell my children. I, t- I didn't want to terrify. I didn't know what to do. I, Sean, I didn't know what to do. And um, and I called him that morning, and I said, this, this is why I'm doing 60 Minutes. I never talked about it on 60 Minutes, but I did tell Don Hewitt, and I did tell El- Ed Bradley what had happened. And I said, I don't want to talk about this. But this is the main reason that I'm doing this. And and the really the really sad thing about this whole thing is that um is that I I have not I've never heard from him again. Oh man. And I don't you know, Sean, I don't blame him. I, think, I don't blame him. If there's anything we could ever do to help facilitate that, we'd love to help you. Well, I just think he's afraid. I don't blame him. Yeah. I understand that. Listen, I've gotten to know all of you. Um, you're all amazingly brave women in your own respects. And more importantly, I, uh, uh, I'm i so sorry for all that you've had to go through and the names you've been called as a result of telling your still story. still being called those names. Horrible names on Twitter. I know. Horrible names. Don't read Twitter. Like. That's my advice. Honestly, just stay off it. But it, it's sometimes the best way to get some things out, you know, because people I know. retweet and retweet. And I mean, that's well, you can tweet and then just don't read what other people say because oh, you got I these. I try not to. You got these keyboard warriors in their underwear mm-hmm. that are psychos and, uh, yeah. Yeah, well, we appreciate that, Sean. No. You know, it's it's hard, it's hard. but we appreciate you. When I interviewed comments. you at the time, I, I think it was the hardest interview I'd ever done. I'd never interviewed a woman that had been raped before. I remember, and I, I remember that interview. I yeah. remember internally I, was sh- I, I wasn't shaking. I don't get nervous, but I remember, like, biting the inside of my cheek because I was, like, I just didn't know. I just, it was yeah. very hard to hear. Does right. that make sense? Oh, yes, yeah. it does. I mean, just hearing it, not, I, I mean, I can't yeah. imagine living it. Yeah, it's so. difficult for me to even talk about it without crying. I Still, understand. after 38 years. I think we all, I cry when I, every time I hear her tell it. Yeah. I can't. It's sad. 
I hope that uh, the world hears you. You're all very brave. Thank you all for being with us. God bless you all, and uh, appreciate it. And I, if we could ever help Kathleen, let us know. Quick break, right back.